can Darwinian evolution escape racism? Before we actually answer this question, the question we need to answer is, is it actually racist? Well, you don't need to go that far. You can just go straight to Darwin. Darwin himself is very explicit about different types of races in his book, The Descent of Man. In fact, even before we go to The Descent of Man, just look at another evolutionary biologist, Ernst Haeckel, his German counterpart, Darwin's friend. And now the picture in front of you at the moment is of different human species. And of course, there is one species, one particular race, which is right at the top. And you have different subspecies of human beings and you have the lowest of the low, according to Ernst Haeckel, which is the black man. And beneath the black man straight away, you get apes. Now, that is from Ernst Haeckel's book, which Darwin reviewed. And after Darwin reviewed it, he said, if I read this book, I wouldn't have published my book, The Descent of Man. So clearly Darwin subscribed to these ideas. Not only did he subscribe, subscribe to these ideas, he himself in The Descent of Man said, in the future, the civilized races, which again, we know who the civilized races are, are going to wipe out the savage races all across the world. And he's clear about this. So that's it there. Can Darwinian evolution actually escape it? It can't. And it can't for this simple reason. If I said gravity works everywhere except this room, that wouldn't make any sense. Because if I believe gravity does work everywhere, why would I make an exception in this room? So the idea that there's different human races and some are more superior than others, this is something that you cannot escape if you subscribe to classical Darwinism. Whether you want to call it neo-Darwinism, doesn't matter. You cannot escape that because you have to have different groups of human beings and some are more likely to survive than others and some are superior to others. That's, that's the bottom line. If you want to make an exception for human beings, then you need to explain why that exception is there. So Darwinian evolution cannot actually escape racism. And what's important is from Darwin's time onwards, there was theories about other races being subhuman and lower, which were coming out of the most prestigious universities in the world using the scientific method. Because remember, science is quite malleable. If you have something that you want to push, you can sometimes reverse engineer uh, the data to actually support it. Now, I found a really interesting quote in this book, which is a very popular book called Sapiens by the historian Yuval Noah Hariri. And now he himself, he's an atheist. He is a Darwinist. He doesn't, you know, he's not a creationist or anything like that, but he's honest about why those racist ideas died down and why it is that, you know, for example, we won't have them today. Now, he says on page 259, the existence of different human races, the superiority of the white race and the need to protect and cultivate this superior race were widely held beliefs amongst most Western elites. Scholars in the most prestigious Western universities using the orthodox scientific methods of the day published studies that allegedly proved that members of the white race were more intelligent, more ethical and more skilled than Africans or Indians. Politicians in Washington, London, Canberra took it for granted that it was their job to prevent the adulteration and degeneration of the white race by, for example, restricting immigration from China or even Italy to Aryan countries such as the USA and Australia. These positions did not change simply because new scientific research was published. Sociological and political developments were far more powerful engines of change. You can't actually have a more frank admission than that. Science is something which you can reverse engineer some data to fit your ideas. Now, these ideas, these racist ideas were actually Darwin's ideas. And these were the ideas of his contemporaries. And these were the ideas that were popular until, of course, 
World War II and afterwards these ideas were shunned and they were pushed aside. But just because they are not discussed does not mean that they are not there implicitly in the theory. If you subscribe to Darwinism as you should not, which is that it is true literally, because of course watch other videos that's clear that that's not the case, but if you do subscribe to that you're going to have a very hard time trying to explain that this theory is not fundamentally racist when it actually is and that is right at the core of the theory and there's no way of actually escaping that. So I hope you've understood from this video the history of racism and Darwinism and how Darwinian evolution cannot escape racism. For more videos about evolution, please subscribe to Darwinian Delusions.